Okay, go ahead. Okay. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be a father and he should be to me a son. But when he gets into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. There you go. On so when he was seated, he was seated when he made purification for sins. He ascended on high and he was seated at the right hand of God. That's when he became the heir of all things. Mm -hmm. He actually was seated as king over the whole world when he sat down. King of kings and Lord of lords, king over all the earth. What's the description of Jesus' reign here in Hebrews 1, 7 to 12? Regarding the angels, he says, he sends his angels like the winds, his servants like flames of fire. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. You rule with a scepter of justice. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than on anyone else. He also says to the Son, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heaven, heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you will remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will fold them up like a cloth, cloth and discard them like old clothing. But you are always the same. You will live forever. Don't you just love this? This is the description of his reign. Reigning in righteousness forever and ever. Way beyond the, this earth in its existence. Okay, so let's look at Jesus here on his throne in Revelation 4, verses 2 and 3. I think we're back to you, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Revelation 4, uh, verse 2 and 3. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, a Are rainbow you? resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Okay. Here is the description of the son, the heir, who is reigning as king. He looks like Jasper. Okay. I have to bring my illustration. I purpose my husband loves stones. Tim just loves stones. This is a this is some Jasper. Can you see it? There's all colors of Jasper. All kinds of colors of Jasper. This is just happens mm -hmm. to be these colors a conglomerate of colors <laughs> and um, you can come in green, you come in all kinds of colors. Mm -hmm. So Jasper looks like this. Mostly this, opaque nowadays. And it's not very clear. You can see it's not clear. It's just colors. Now I have to tell you something about, about um, let me put this this way a little bit more. <clears throat> Jasper, well, he looks like Jasper. In appearance, he's like Jasper. Why Jasper? That's kind of strange. What does this symbolize? Well, let me just tell you. Jasper, when we go to Revelation 21, we see that the holy city is shown with the, uh, shown what was bright with the glory of God. It's brilliance like that of a very precious jewel. <laughs> like Jasper. But that Jasper is as clear as crystal. Does that look like Jasper to you? Clear as crystal. Here's a clear crystal. Not a spark. This is clear. So basically, 
why this this jasper in the new Jerusalem is not this color, but it's this color. Why do you think he's using jasper as precious jewel? It's also the first foundation of the wall of the holy city is jasper. <laughs> the first foundation, jasper, as clear as crystal. It may have color. It doesn't have to be quite like this. But it's clear, clear mm -hmm. as crystal. You want my opinion on it? <laughs> well, I'm giving it. It would reflect all colors. I believe it's the son. He represents the son of God, because okay. there's going to be people redeemed from every tribe, name, nation, language, and people, every color in the world. Probably yeah. Be. But they're as righteous as can be in the city. Totally clear, totally sparkly sons and daughters of God. So this represents Jesus, the son of God, that firstborn. Okay. And he's also like Carnelian. Here's what the Carnelian looks like. Almost all carnelian is reddish or reddy shoes. It might be an orange red, but it has a lot of red in it. Orange, red, and yellow. It can be mostly red. And it's interesting that Adam or man means red. Edom means what? Red. Adam oh. means red, like Edom means red in the Bible. Now I have to say, carnelian is the sixth foundation. In the city. What does six represent in the Bible? Man. 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 Names it as the sixth foundation. Could this be the Son of God and the Son of Man? The firstborn of the woman, that seed promise sitting on the throne, that heir of all things. What do you think? And symbols. You see, we have symbols. We have to understand the meaning of the symbols. And then we understand what it's talking about here. Jesus, the son of God and the son of man is sitting there. He sits there. What, what does sitting down mean? Resting. Resting. His work uh -huh. is finished. <laughs> He's done it. He's bought. The, he has the inheritance. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, created himself one new man. So we are heirs of his inheritance. <laughs> we are sons and daughters of God. And then there's a rainbow looking like an emerald, encircling the, the one in a circle, in a circle around the throne. By the way, that's the fourth foundation is emerald in the in the city wall. <laughs> Sorry, don't have any large emeralds to illustrate that. With. <laughs> <laughs> but they're generally green. <laughs> translucent. And translucent, beautiful gems. Now I think it's interesting. And in, in Isaiah 11, 1, it talks about uh, the branch from Jesse's root. Remember that? Do you know that word branch, that name for Jesus, comes from a root saying from greenness, a striking mm. color, because it is a shoot. It is fresh and fresh life. <laughs> Did you know that? I didn't know that till I studied that a while back. <laughs> that we branch. We call it spring green. Spring green. There's a, there's a town near Madison called Spring yeah, Green. It's pretty close to Emerald, isn't it? it almost mm -hmm. looks like a, uh, animals almost look like a spring green. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just love how the Bible just makes it so clear for things we know about and uses even symbols that we, you and I can see to help us understand some things. This is life. <laughs> I, get, I can't help but think of that rainbow. The first one we hear about, a promise of life. <laughs> you know, Noah comes out, they just had the judgment, and all that's left is Noah and his righteous family after the flood. And it had been raining and raining. What did God do as a promise to the whole earth? That he'd maintain a land and food to eat on that land <laughs> as long as the earth endures <laughs> until the culmination of all things. There you go, father providing for his family 
while we're down here. That's for us right now. This land will be here until he comes. And there will be food to eat till he comes. Our God is our supplier. He's the father. So that encircled the throne. Jesus' reign means life. Life. In the new earth. He is the life. Okay. Let's move on to the 24 elders. Any other questions about that? You see how it all ties with the inheritance as we're going along. Tim asked me, what does this inheritance have to do with all this? I said, well, remind me to mention it. <laughs> how in my mind is already tying together, but maybe you haven't said it. <laughs> so, okay, the 24 elders. Before we read the passage about the 24 elders here, elders in Hebrew and Greek basically mean elder, you know, old age. <laughs> but they're generally referred to as leaders and what you know the context de determines whether they're a leader among people or not but it's wisdom when you have older people it's important and in the old testament the elders and in the new they were really important in governing the body the governing body over the god's people okay <clears throat> so Old Testament, Israel and Judah, the 70 elders under Moses. We have chief priests, scribes, and elders. In the New Testament, in the Judea, they had chief priests, scribes, and elders. So from the time of Moses on down, they had a governing body over God's people. In the New Testament, in the church, they're called shepherds of the flock. Always uses the male form of the word. You can understand that when we just talked about where life comes through. And it, because they're supposed to be husbands of one wife and it uses the male Greek form of the word when it's referring to the leadership in the church. <clears throat> Old Testament types and shadows. There were 70 elders under Moses, the context, Exodus 24, the Old Testament covenant confirmed. When the, God confirmed his covenant to the Israelites, they're outside, right beside Mount Sinai in Exodus 24. The law is given in Exodus 20, but Exodus 24. Moses built an altar at the foot of Mount Sinai. He set up 12 stone pillars representing each of the 12 tribes. Young men, Israelites, burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as fellowship offerings. And Moses took the blood, the proof that the one who wrote the will was dead. Half of the blood was sprinkled on the altar and half of the blood he put in a bowl. He read the book of the covenant to all the people. You know what their response was? <laughs> everything so. written in the book of the law we will, do. we will do we will obey and then what did moses do remember tim sprinkled the blood he sprinkled the blood the over the people all, in front of them. all of them mm -hmm. okay you're covered under the blood in other words you're under the blood the sacrifice it was symbolic of being under the sacrifice then, and he said when he did that he said this is the blood of the covenant the Lord has made with you in accordance with these words. Do you know that reminded me of something about us in the new covenant? When Jesus took the blood, when he took the cup, he said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this to remember me. Hmm. Jesus does some similar things, doesn't he? Okay, so who is next to read? It's you, Nancy, I think. Exodus 24, 9 to 11. And then, Gail, we'll have you in Revelation 4, 4. We'll read about the 24 elders. And we're almost ready to get to back to the throne a little bit here. <clears throat> Exodus 24, 9 to 11. God had told Moses to have Aaron and his two sons and 70 elders to come up the mountain. And this is what they did. So after he'd done all this, spring that I just described is Exodus 24, 9 to 11. Go ahead, Nancy. You ready for me to read? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel climbed up the mountain. There they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet, there seemed to be a surface of brilliant blue lapis lazuli, as clear as the sky itself. And though these nobles of Israel gazed upon God, he did not destroy them. In fact, they ate a covenant meal, eating and drinking in his presence. So they went up there and saw God of Israel, the God of Israel. And under his feet was something 
like a pavement made of sapphire, says in this translation. In the New Testament, <clears throat> by the way, sapphire is the sec second foundation in the wall of the city. Same rock, same gem, second foundation. Sapphire clear as the sky. It, sapphire is generally blue and it's clear as the sky, isn't it? Is that sapphire? This is lapis lazuli. Well, this says sapphire here. Oh, well. What's sapphire look like? Similar. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearer though, isn't it? Yep. Sapphire yeah. is clear. Yeah, so it comes in, it's in different colors of blue too. I mean, it's usually you think of the deep blue, but it can be a little lighter too. But sapphire is usually a clear one. And that's mm -hmm. why it's really truly the sapphire because it's talking about it clear as the sky. It's interesting. Um, it's something like a pavement under his feet. Now it's interesting, there's a barrier here, isn't there? His feet are on this pavement. They can't go past this point. And it's clear as the sky itself. But God did not raise his hand against the leaders of Israel. He had commanded that they do this. They saw God and they ate and drank. What do you think is happening here? They are having a covenant meal. Gail, is, is it yours is coming on? I don't know. I don't know. We're hearing some background somewhere. I'm not sure where the background's coming from. But I heard that just then. I heard it, but I don't know. It, it's, it's me. I'm in a noisy place, so I'm trying to stay muted, but I didn't. Okay. I didn't okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure where it was coming from. Sorry. Just trying to figure it out. Okay. I should just ask and have you raise your hand. <laughs> not, a cute, not a snoom. <laughs> Sorry, Gail. I wasn't seeing this assumption. It's usually me. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> the implication being, no, no, I'm so sorry. That was not I can tell. Never know what's going <laughs> to be here. Let me see. Moving back to the lesson. I'm so sorry, ladies. <laughs> okay. So they ate and drank. They had a covenant meal with God. We're going to see that this is something that we're going to see just in a little bit. When we see the throne. We're going to see something clear as crystal coming up right away here in Revelation. It's a barrier. What do you think why it's clear as crystal? Because it's a holy barrier. You cannot cross in the place of the holy God. You cannot cross over into God's presence of holiness unless you have the blood, unless you have Jesus, unless you're in him. Okay, so Revelation 4.4. 4. What do we see here in Revelation 4.4? 4. I think that was your, Gail, that's you, right? What? Revelation, what do you want me to do? Revelation oh, 4.4. 4. Did, you read, did I assign that to you? I can't remember, but I think I did. No, you did. Lynn, Lynn's keeping that with that aren't you? I need, we need help. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, well, I haven't been real clear on my assignments. I, I apologize. I'll try to do better. <laughs> so for so what do you what do you Revelation want me to do with four, four? Just read Revelation four, verse four for us, would you, Gail? Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. There you go. That's just one mm. verse talking about the 24 elders. Notice what they're doing. They're seated. There's 24 thrones. There's 24, there's an elder seat, seated on each throne. So I'm going to throw out a question. Surrounding the throne are 24 thrones. Why 24? <laughs> you knew I'd ask that question. Yes. <laughs> Of course, of course, numbers. <laughs> They're symbolic. What does a symbol represent? 24. <laughs> Tim, do you have a thought? Somebody help me. Oh, I have one thought. I have a quick, I, what? Go ahead, Gail. What'd you say? I said, I have a thought on it. I was just thinking, well, 24 are two twelves. So it's a witness. You're talking about the 12 tribes. 
So it's a double, it's, it's a witness of the two twelves. Could be, could be. Or it could be 12 tribes. And Some, summation of all the new covenants. Yes, I think it maybe it's the 12 tribes and the 12 apostles because we're seeing those sure. as a key in book of Revelation 21 and 22, 21, where it talks about the gates and the 12, 12 uh, tribes coming in through the gates. And you know, <clears throat> Well, that would make sense because the, the tribes kept the law, the apostles, it was the new covenant, old covenant, new covenant. Old covenant, new covenant, all come together, one governing body, because they're all really preaching in truth. Jesus Christ is the heir. <laughs> there's no dif there's no different salvation for the old people than the new. They Jesus just hadn't died yet. They had had types and symbols looking forward to it, but they're saved the same way. There's no difference in how old people testament people from Adam. And New Testament people down to the last person that accepts Jesus are saved one way in Christ. One. There's no other way. There's no other body. There's only one body. There's only one Savior. There's only mm -hmm. one faith. <laughs> There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. One. <laughs> no other salvation. Mm -hmm. no. That's the governing body, 12 and 12. They are ruling and reigning with Christ. They're seated like he's seated. What does it say about us? This is the representing the corporate body, the whole salvation of the corporate body of Christ. Because we're seated in the heavenlies with him. That's right. We're seated in the heavenlies with him. We have so much of this. this you see how the revelation just ties everything together. It's so excited. They're dressed in white. What does that mean? Righteousness. righteousness. Yeah. Their righteousness. They're not naked and exposed. Adam was naked when he sinned, you know, and he tried to cover his big leaves, needed the sacrificial garment. They cleansed by the blood. They're wearing gold crowns on their heads. Oh, guess what? Those are the crowns of victory. Wearing the crowns of victory. 24 elders you said who they were. So the 24 elders represents the corporate church, God's in the son's inheritance. This is his inheritance. Give me the nations, boy. I'm getting as many as I can out of the nations. The son is saying, go, go, go evangelize and witness to all these people. I want more in my more of a bigger inheritance. I want a vast multitude without number. That's the son. We're seated with him at heavenly places. Okay, moving right along. The throne. Revelation 4, 5, 5 to 6 A. And let's see, Janice. Revelation 4. Five to six A, first half of the six, because it's new, changes a whole sentence and paragraph and thought right in the middle of verse six. Okay. Okay, New King James, and from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass with a crystal. And in the midst of the throne okay, and stop, around the throne. Stop, 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 stop there. Stop, stop hey, right there. <laughs> I know you're starting okay. into be. <laughs> Second half is changing the thought right there. So I don't know why they have that all in one verse, but you know, that's arbitrary. Verses are arbitrary. So sorry to stop you, but uh, so from the throne came what? Lightning. Lightning. Of light rumblings and peals of thunder it's exactly what we're going to see in the seventh the seventh seal when it's opened except there's going to be one more thing added there importantly also so reminiscent of sinai sinai yes wow. like sinai that's right judgment judgment seven lamps are blazing which is the seven spirits of god Revelation 1 14, remember Jesus' eyes were like blazing fire. And Revelation 5 6, we'll talk about it next time. The Lamb has seven eyes, and which are the seven spirits of God. So these are the seven lamps, or the seven spirits of God. Jesus' eyes are like blazing fire. <laughs> and this, the Lamb has seven eyes, which are the spirits of God. Hmm. Several things are referred to and said, these are the spirit of God. Well, what do you think? All seeing, the spirit 
searches all of our hearts. We are, it's all seen. Nothing's hidden from God's view. Nothing. It has to do with judgment. Jesus is the righteous judge over all the earth. In John 5, 22, it says the father judges no man, but he has given all judgment to his son. The father judges no man, but he's given all judgment to his son. Have you ever wondered what that text meant? You can see it here. Jesus, we have to all come before the judgment seat of Christ, it says. All of us must come before the judgment seat of Christ, says in Second Corinthians. So what have we done with Jesus is what we're judged on, Old Testament or New Testament. Are we in him? Do we receive him? Do we believe on the lamb? Do we believe in Jesus or not? And by the way, later on, we'll see when we believe in him, we're written, our names are written in the lamb's book of life. <clears throat> and we see a sea of glass clear as crystal. Does that sound like the, the 70 elders? Pavement, like sapphire, as clear as the sky, separating them because God's feet were on there, separating them from God. Cannot approach God if unrighteous. Can only come clothed in Christ, dressed in white. Oh, moving quickly to the four living creatures. It usually means separation, right? And here's. It is a separation. Separation between godliness, see, holiness, and you have to cross humanity. the sea to get into the promised land. Mm -hmm. So there is a sense of sea being separation. Yeah, let's get, I'm glad you brought that out. Well, we're going to move really quickly through this next section uh, because we're going to get into the four living creatures, in it, but we're going to start in Ezekiel. We're going to get back to Ezekiel 1 before we come back here. So move, move back to Ezekiel 1. And uh, let's see, the next one to read is, is that Tim? Is it you? That's Tim. Tim, Ezekiel 1, 4 to 9. And Lynn, I'm going to let you do Ezekiel 1, 10 to 14 when we get there. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to talk quick. For starters, do not stuff the New Testament into the Old Testament when we talk about symbols. Too many times we want to make the, uh, the Old Testament be what's in the new instead of the other way around. We Old Testament symbols are but shadows of the new. The full interpretation happens as we see it in the substance Christ in the New Testament. That's our aha moment. So don't interpret Revelation by Ezekiel. <clears throat> Ezekiel provides the context and clues to get a few more details okay so that's where we're going to start there it kind of gives us the context and some thoughts we must interpret ezekiel in light of the new testament and revelation and the context of ezekiel is judah had rebelled against god and they were in captivity in babylon and ezekiel was taken to babylon in the second of the three deportation of the exiles from judea to babylon and he was both a priest and a prophet. And at age 30, when he generally became a priest, he got his prophetic calling in his first vision. And it was that his first vision was what the whole book culminates in, is this. It's kind of like Genesis 1 compared to Genesis 2 and onward. This is that. This is, this is what I want to do with this. And then it'll talk about the next thing. And it always starts with, kind of the, the outcome and then it moves on and describes in more detail of God's people always continues on so <clears throat> the climax the focus the end point to the book of Ezekiel is in chapter one I believe and the four living creatures I'll tell you what they represent right now so you get the thought they represent the one new man those in Christ the believers in the new covenant because he created in himself one new man. Jesus, the creator, made one new man in him. So if we're in him, we get the inheritance. If we're in Christ, we're in inheritance. If we're in the air, we share in the inheritance. Ezekiel 1, 4 to 9. 
As I looked, I saw a great storm coming from the north, driving before it a huge cloud that flashed with lightning and shone with brilliant light. There was fire inside the cloud, and in the middle of the fire glowed something like gleaming amber. From the center of the cloud came four living beings that looked human, except that each had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, and their feet had hooves like those of a calf, and shone like burnished bronze. Under each of their four wings, I could see human hands. So each of the four beings had four faces and four wings. The wings of each being touched the wings of the beings beside it. Each one moved straight forward in any direction without turning around. Okay. This is the four living creatures, very similar to what we're gonna see in Revelation. I just wanted to give you the background here coming starting with Ezekiel. Each face, there's four. Four has to do with what? The earth, always. This had to do with the earth four corners of the earth and from the north which is where the ruling power is <laughs> above all the earth comes the judge he's coming and in the center was that glowing metal and so you see that's the sacrifice and uh, and in the fire in the fire looked like four living creatures now, it's interesting. They're traveling. They have wings. They form parents of man. Their legs are straight. They're going on a straight path. Feet like a calf, a male calf. You know the word. They, they gleam like burnished bronze. Why do you think that? Jesus in Revelation 1.15, his feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. What do you think? They're, why do, is their feet like burnished bronze? Foundation is the sacrifice. The sacrifice. <clears throat> and under their wings, their feet were like a male calf. So that's a sacrifice. Under their wings. Burnished bronze is the altar. And burnished bronze is the altar. Yeah. Under their wings are four sides. And four sides are the hands of a man. It's man and what he does. Okay. The wings touched each other. Perfect unity because they're all connected. Each went straight ahead, did not turn as they moved, on one path into God's ways. This, notice, this is, the, this is a good, these four living creatures are living creatures. You know why they're living? Because they're not dead. <laughs> this literally means living creatures. It means, it means living. <laughs> living means living. They have crossed from death to life. <laughs> when it's talking about living here, it's referring to the redeemed. Because they're alive. You've crossed from death to life. We were once dead in a trespasses and sins, but now we're alive in Christ. Yeah. <laughs> We've been made alive in Christ. <laughs> we're the living creature. Okay, going on, verses 10 to 14 in Ezekiel 1. Lynn. I'm sorry, it was 1 10 to what? 10 to 14. The 14. Their faces looked like this. Each of the four had the face of a man and on the right side, each had the face of a lion and on the left, the face of an ox. Each also had the face of an eagle. Such were their faces. Their wings were spread out upward. Each had two wings, one touching the wing of another creature on either side and two wings covering its body. Each one went straight ahead. Wherever the spirit would go, they would go without turning as they went. The appearance of the living creatures were like the burning coals of fire or like the torches, fire moved back and forth among the creatures. It was bright and the lightning flashed out of it. The creatures sped back and forth like flashes of lightning. There you go. What do we see? They each had the face of a what? Man. A man. This is definitely referring to a man, mankind, this new man. On the right side, side of honor, <laughs> Is the face of a lion on the left is an ox. And they also have a face of an eagle. They all did. Their wings were stretched upward. You see what we're saying here? We have a man, lion, an ox, and an eagle. Okay. We'll see that again in Revelations. Keep that in the back of your mind. We'll talk about it a little more there. 
Their wings are upward, they're touching wing to another, that unity is covering the body. So they're, so, so they're not, they're not naked, they're covered. <laughs> they're covered. And the other are touching each other. You see what this is? Describing the body of Christ, the, the one new man. They went straight ahead. Wherever the spirit went, they went without turning one side or the other. They did not deviate from that path. Um, we were going to see that. Oh. Gail, can you please mute your, uh, Gail, can you mute the Zoom? The wings went up, were touching one wing to another, which is unity. They went straight ahead. Wherever the spirit went, they went. They did not deviate from the path. In appearance, they were like, oh, I guess I can mute. In appearance, they were like burning coals of fire. Wow, burning coals of fire. You know what? Pretty bright. You think about Isaiah. He says, I've covered your guilt. I'm, put, I'm giving you a burning coal of fire on your lips. On Isaiah 6. He says, I'm unclean. And he took the tongs in the altar. He takes, the angel takes a burning coal of fire and touches their lips to cover their uncleanness. Isn't that amazing? And, and their appearance was like lightning and judgment. The, the believer's lives reflect God. You know, you ever had somebody say to you, who are you to judge us? <laughs> Lot said that. Lot said, who are you to judge us? Who are you to judge? The, they said this to Lot when he went out to, walk, to warn Sodom. Who are you to judge us? Who are you to judge us? And I think in this day and age, we have a lot of people saying, who are you to judge us? Have you ever felt that way? Who are you to say I'm wrong? Who are you to tell me I'm wrong? And that's interesting how it is. That's evil men's response. Who are you to judge us? There are four standards over Israel. Very interesting. Remember God called Israel his firstborn son. In the wilderness, the tribes of Israel were allotted places to live. The Levites around the tabernacle, in Numbers 1, it talks about the Levites were given a place around the tabernacle. The Levites were taking place of the first male offering of the Israelite women. And the Levites are mine, for all of the firstborn are mine. God considered the Levites his firstborn. Interesting, isn't it? The priests were the firstborn. The other 12 tribes were allotted places on sides of the tabernacle. Four standards shown on a banner. They had, they were, the rest of the tribes in numbers two were put around the tabernacle and around the sanctuary. And there were allotted places on the sides all around the tabernacle. Now those four standards were shown on a banner. If you read this in numbers uh, two. And there's two tribes, each, there was four main tribes and two other tribes underneath the four main tribes. Jewish tradition states that the ban what was on the banners. On the east, we know, it says there, that Judah was placed where the sun rises. Judah was placed on the east where the sun rises. And he was called the Lion of Judah. So the lion was on the east. On the south was Reuben. And they said his was the faith of the man. He's the firstborn son of Jacob. Reuben was. On the west was Ephraim. He was considered the ox, the second son of Joseph. And on the north was Dan, the eagle, the firstborn of the slave woman, Rachel's slave. And the four living creatures in Ezekiel had four wing, wheels. Those four living creatures. So we see those four living creatures again in the banners over Israel, which is God's people in the Old Testament. Those Israelites camped around the ta tabernacle. And the four living creatures in Ezekiel had, I'm going to tell you quickly, they had wheels, wheels beside them on the earth. They all looked alike, the wheels did. They were all one in unity. They were on the ground. They were earthly. They sparkle like chrysolite, which is the seventh foundation of the wall of the city, which is righteousness. They had four rims, high and awesome. 
they were those rims were high and awesome, just like heaven. And they're full of eyes all around. They were all seeing. They view things from the spirit. The wheels went in any of four directions. The wheels did not turn about. They go everywhere the spirit leads. They stay on course. A wheel intersecting the wheel. God's spirit intersects our spirit. The spirit of the living creatures is in the wheels. It said. This is spirit-led, spirit-born believers. Can you see this? This is the new creation because the spirit is within the wheels. And there's an expanse above the four living creatures. There's still the sea of glass, that barrier still in place above these four living creatures in Ezekiel, which is describing the new creation, describing the one new man. You see it? They're, they have wings like the roar of rushing waters. All must have living waters like the voice of the almighty, a tumult of an army. We are his witnesses, his voice, his army. When they stood still, they lowered their wings. When they were moving, it was sounding like rushing waters. And when they stood still, they lowered their wings. And then Ezekiel 125 says, then Ezekiel heard a voice. But we'll continue this when we get to the two witnesses in Revelation 11. Because it's going to tie in to the testimony and the witness of the two witnesses. So <clears throat> back to the four creatures in Revelation. We're going to wind this down. Four living creatures in Revelation. Revelation 4. Six A, no, six B <laughs> through verse eight, the second half of verse six through eight, <laughs> Revelation four, six B through eight. Is that your turn, Tim? I don't mind. I don't remember for sure. I think it is. I don't know. I think Janice read last. So. Did you read? I don't know. Who read last? I, don't, I think I did. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I don't know whose turn it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll read it. Okay, read okay. it for us. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, four six B, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. There you go. You have four living creatures. They're again, in the center, in the center around the throne. This is the heart. Here's the heart of this passage this is jesus redemption the closest place to the throne and to the sun it's the object of his love his children his one new man this is his object and there are four living creatures again zoon which means living creatures the first like a lion from the tribe of Judah, <laughs> you know, you can see it. The second, like an ox, we saw that that was Ephraim back in the Old Testament. By the way, it says someplace it translates it calf. Well, that ox really does mean, it means, um, I forgot to tell you that when we had the ox back here. Um, anyway, ox means, <laughs> I looked it up. And I don't know where I wrote it down. But anyway, the ox means it was like, um, where did I write that? The ox is basically a bull, it can be a bullock, a baby bull, a baby calf, a, a male calf, you know what you might say. So it can be a calf of a bull, of a calf, you know. Usually there were large working cattle like and they, pulling things. And they were the, the, 
they were the highest of all the domesticated animals. They were considered the most important because they were used for plowing. They sometimes use bullocks to, to, to take in front of a cart. Sometimes they use them that way. Um, so, and sometimes they even use them as a peace offering, as a sacrifice, an ox. They call them bullocks, an ox, but it's basically a calf. And uh, this is a young, a young bullock, you might say. <clears throat> so that was Ephraim. And by the way, you had Judah on one side and you had Ephraim on the other. Ephraim, out of the tribe of Ephraim came, remember that was the second son of Joseph where, where um, Jacob crossed his arms when he was blessing Joseph's two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And he put his right hand, I mean, Joseph was trying to move around. We got his right hand on Manasseh. No, he purposely crossed his hands. <laughs> I thought it was a senior moment, but. <laughs> he had him over there, but he says, no, my right hand's hidden, going on Ephraim's head, not Manasseh's, <laughs> your firstborn, you're going secondborn of you, Joseph. Interesting. And out of Ephraim came, out of that tribe. You know who came from that tribe? Joshua, who led them in the promised land. Caleb was from the tribe of Judah, by the way. And he conquered, he conquered and asked for Hebron. I didn't have time, to, I kind of cut that all out because I knew I'd be limited on time. But he conquered the Hebrew, Hebron, where Abraham had settled, when Lot and Abraham settled, Abraham divided it and God said, look out over the land. I'm going to give it all to you. To you, you're going to have descendants as the dust of the earth. And you just walk all over the land. Wherever you walk, you claim it. Well, Joshua had been promised. Caleb had been promised. Wherever you wash, Mo Moses said, wherever you walk, you can claim it. And he said, when well, I'm now 85 years old, I was 40 then, I'm still as young. I'm going to go conquer those Anakites, which by the way, were the giants in the land. I'm going to conquer them with the Lord's help. I'm going to conquer them and I'm getting taken Hebron. That's where Abraham had settled and stayed the rest of his life was in Hebron in Judah. And later on, King David, first seven years of his reign, he reigned from Hebron. There was another king from Hebron. His name was Jeroboam first king over Israel, but unfortunately he departed from God's ways. And so we don't see Ephraim listed in 144,000. So I've already given you an answer to why he's not in the list. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so, and one like, and the third one, like a man, that was Reuben. You see the firstborn naturally, the natural firstborn face like a man. But that firstborn has now been coming into the real true firstborn, Jesus Christ. And the fourth, like a flying eagle. That was in the north, over the tribes. It was Dan, it was for this most tribe. It was the firstborn son of the slave women, Rachel's firstborn son, Dan in the north. But who was meant to be the king over the earth? God, not the prince of this world, Satan. So, in essence, that flying eagle who sees all things, we're going to see the flying eagle flying again later on in Revelation. God proclaiming things. Each had six wings in contrast to Ezekiel. Creatures in Ezekiel had four wings. Isaiah 6 had six wings. Yeah, the creatures in the four wings in chapter 1 when talking about the earthly functionality. And Ezekiel, <laughs> the creatures in... Ezekiel 6, I'm glad you brought Isaiah that up. Six. Isaiah. Hmm. Well, there's, yeah, in Isaiah 6, the angels had six wings. Right, the angels. And Ezekiel, in chapter 10 of, of Ezekiel, talks about the four living creatures, but they call them cherubims there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't have a face of a man. <laughs> there's a different focus. They do have a face of a man, but they're cherubs. And so instead of the ox, they have cherubs. Interesting. And there are six wings. Interesting. Because now we, we don't interpret Revelation by Ezekiel, by 
Revelation by Ezekiel, we interpret, interpret Ezekiel in terms of Revelation. Remember, that's how we, that's the rule of some. You got to always follow. Look at the New Testament. This is talking about one new man. So the aha moment's happening because whenever they rebelled, the glory departed from the temple in chapter 10 of Ezekiel. And that new man rose up to heaven. You know when the glory actually departed from the temple? That's whenever they rejected him at the cross. That new man is no longer down here. God doesn't dwell in temples made by human hands. It's now a heavenly temple. And cherub speaks of heavenly. First face was a cherub, it's heavenly. Second face was man. The third face was the lion life. And the fourth face was the eagle. Still have the eagle. In the sixth chapter, the tenth chapter of Ezekiel. In LT, it says human face. It doesn't say cherub face. First face was cherub, the second was a man. It says first face of an ox, second was a human face, third was a lion, fourth was an eagle. The order is different. Order is different, except for the eagle is the same. Hmm. It's interesting. In the NIV, it says cherub. Maybe cherub and ox were interchangeable. I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know. I didn't study it, but that's interesting. Hmm. <laughs> so maybe they didn't have a cherub face. And so each had six wings. But we know that is, and each covered with eyes all around, even under their wings. They're all seen. They view things from the spirit, not from the flesh. They walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Compare Jesus in Isaiah 11, the branch. He didn't judge or decide by the senses. He didn't judge by what he saw with his eyes or decide by what he heard with his ears but he judged in righteousness. That's walking by the spirit, isn't it? We can't decide, make our decisions by what we see, hear, taste, or smell. That got Adam into problem when he judged by what he heard. Mm. We don't be judged by the circumstances in our lives. This new man walks only by the spirit, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Praise to the Holy Lord God Almighty is always on their lips. Notice that their praise is always on their lips. Day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. In conclusion, Revelation 4, 9 to 11. The Keeps final the doxology. One of their chairs, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 They're praising God. This is what that, those living creatures are doing. That's what the whole new man is doing, is praising and worshiping mm. God. That's where our focus should be in our lives, is praising and worshiping God. And the praise of the redeemed resounds through heaven. As the praise resounds, let's see, in Revelation 4, 9 to 11. Lynn, would you read that for us? Whatever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Don't you love this? What do they do? When the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, it's describing him again, <laughs> the great and mighty heir to the inheritance. When you look at this also, remember we talked about the threes, the grouping of threes, when things are being said. It starts with holy, holy, holy. There's three holy, holy, holies. I like Lord, that. Yeah. And then Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, another three. And then when you go further down, of course, they give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne. And if you go, I'm sure there's more in there. Um, and then when you go further down, 
uh, then it said, you are worthy, our Lord and God, again, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. By your will, they were created and have their being. Another, There's just loads of threes in there. I'll oh, testify. Wow. That is beautiful. Three, 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 three. <laughs> yeah, the threes. There's at least four of them in there, maybe more. <laughs> yeah, I have um, seven of them. So, yeah. Holy, holy, holy was is and is to come glory honor and thanks hmm. wow hmm. here you got him lord and god wow isn't this good isn't this good i tell you he created all things and by your will they were created he gets back to that creation that's why to me it ties so strongly to adam in the beginning and the creation that he created all things nothing existed without our god without jesus except jesus that's john one and now he he created in himself in ephesians one new man he created all things and we are sustained in him what an amazing amazing thing that is what an amazing savior what an amazing we're his inheritance Does this, does this seem to jive okay? It's such a complete package. We'll be unpacking it <laughs> forever, probably. Yeah. This, go ahead. It reminds me of Psalm 2 that you mentioned. Ask of me and I give you the inheritance. I give you the nations for your inheritance. You are right. We are his inheritance for his work. Yeah. They call it his, we are his reward. I think it says that in the first... And is that in the first chapter of Revelation? That blew me away because it said that. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes you that, don't feel like you're much of a reward for anybody. I know. When I read that, the really, I mean, I, I read it before, but it really sunk in the one time I read it. It just blew me away that we are his reward. Really? <laughs> a reward for the God of the universe. Yeah, you know, that's the thing I think that struck me the most. Whole chapter was I was just overwhelmed and blown away that Bev, who does so many crazy, stupid things sometimes, you know, I mean, put your tongue, you know, I, I can just, anyway. <laughs> Imperfect, like a Imperfect as I am, that he, I'm his inheritance, his reward. He, he's so excited about you and me. That's who he's excited about. That's what gives him great joy. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And that joy was you and me. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. We are his inheritance. And so contemplate and think about that in the next day or so. Just, just let it sink in. You are his inheritance. We are his inheritance. No matter what. Precious in the sight that precious jewel, the holy city. He said, I'm going to show you the bride, the new Jerusalem. Oh, that new Jerusalem is kind of a symbol also of the bride. I mean, it's interesting. Because he calls the holy city the bride. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're the, the city. We are, that, we are the city. It's his government, his rulership. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's so interesting when we get to Revelation 21. And it's a jewel a very valuable jewel like jasper i used to think jasper being a jewel <laughs> i didn't realize he was talking about clear as crystal <laughs> i always thought i was i always thought that jasper was clear so <laughs> there may be some i just haven't come across it well i've never seen a piece of jasper i've looked at a lot of rocks with my husband that's clear there may be <laughs> But all I could find was the closest is this crystal that describes to a relations jewel, Jasper. Um, well, the Lord be with you all. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, it means a lot that you were here. Awesome. Yeah, it means a lot to talk about inheritance. Yeah, and we're going to get into more of this as he, as he opens up those seals and rips off those seals of the inheritance. So the inheritance mm -hmm. can be ours. Yeah. Oh my, Tim, would you just close this in prayer today? Sure. Thank you, Lord, for the glimpse of such awesome things to come and things that we can 
begin to envision and claim even now as your children. May it be ever more real in our hearts and minds as we look to you and worship you and, and endeavor to uh, fellowship with you more deeply and fully. Thank you for this privilege and opportunity to open your word together. Thank you for your guidance and illumination now and in, in coming uh, days, weeks, and beyond. We love you and praise you, Lord, for all these good things that you have in mind for your kids. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessings on each one of you.